Oh wow, I <laughs> look how cool this is. I like it. <laughs> About a year ago, we picked up a Predator 670 to see if it would fit in our 3D printed MBK1 prototype. Look at that, it fits Sam. It's perfect. Since then, it's been sitting on the shelf. So today, we're dusting it off and finally building our dream mini bike. Got a problem. What's the problem? This thing is down too low. I think we're gonna have to cut it. So we have our prototype 2 sitting on this table because we finally got a few parts for the 670. And so that means we can finally, as we know you guys have been waiting, to put a 670 in one of our frames. Now please note, this is our mock-up frame, so it's nice because we scratched it up quite a bit. This was actually the frame that we used when we did our first pre-sale for the MBK1. We have the torque converter here, we got the plates right here, and then we got our swing arm and seat there. But realistically for today, I think we're just gonna focus on getting this on the engine and getting the engine where it needs to be so that we know where everything else needs to line up. So what do we need to do in order to get started? Okay, so let's um, put one plate in. <laughs> Got a problem. This thing is down too low. That won't even bolt flush. So there's actually a little bracket yeah. right there oh. that is supposed to rest on top of the engine here. And so, but the issue is it is hitting the frame. So maybe we do have another block. So we could lift this up to see if that will work. So why don't we- Wanna try that? Yeah, so let me go grab it and then I'll just slide it in underneath. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we still got clearance above. That's almost two inches of height, but let's just take a look here. Okay. Okay, so that's perfect right there. Nice and flush, but when we slide it over, it still touches the frame. Oh, just by a hair. By a hair? Yeah. Okay. So as you guys can see, so the, the bracket, the L bracket is still about a half an inch above the engine plate, which means we can probably cut maybe a little bit underneath it and we'll be fine. So we just got to basically draw a straight line so we know where to cut. So when you're building custom mini bikes, you're probably gonna run into a couple hiccups, especially when you're using multiple different components from different places. So I'm curious to know in the comments below, what would you do if you were in our shoes? Would you cut the torque converter? Would you try to modify the frame or engine plate? Or would you just raise the engine up enough for the torque converter to work without having to cut it? I'm curious, even though we're gonna go ahead and cut ours, I wanna know in the comments, what would you do? You got the plate yeah. off. Now we just need to cut it. Oh, Nelly! You almost get yourself? No. Nope. All right, so we have the engine now where it needs to roughly be. I think we found like two bolts that just kind of make sure that it's lined up. And so this gives us kind of an idea of how much movement we have. And so now that this is actually cut, we're just gonna test it, but we are gonna clean up the edges. So it's not the cleanest cut, but we will clean it up and make that all nice and smooth. And then we might even have to like get this repainted. But for now, let's just make sure it actually fits on the frame. Are we on? Oh, but yeah, you can see there's so much clearance now. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so we were just playing around with this a little bit because we need to make sure that this, because we can't cut this, it's gonna to touch the frame if it's too close. So as you can see, we have it where it's just missing the frame there, but that gives us just enough room where it's not gonna to touch and then the only issue that we're gonna run into is now we need a longer shaft so that it can go all the way over to where we're gonna line up with these holes here because we're gonna try to use one of our jack shaft bearing houses and then ultimately it will, the shaft will go through here and should line up flush with the frame. So we actually need a shaft. So that one there, I don't know how long it is, but the shaft that we need needs to be about eight inches longer 
from that point on. So again, these are the things that are gonna come up when you're building a custom bike, but we're gonna make it work and ultimately, it seems like it's pretty simple. We just need a collar that's gonna make it thick enough so that it will not touch the frame, but it will still work and line up with this right here. So yeah, fingers crossed everything will work out. And then the fun part begins when we have to try to design the exhaust. Since the last time we were filming with the 670, I got married. That's how long it's been since we were able to move forward on it because we were waiting on a few key parts such as the aluminum for the jack shaft and then also the triple clamps for the handlebars. But we finally got everything back and so we could actually start making progress on the 670. And today, we're turning it into a full roller. One and a half. Mm, no, it's not. This is two, so this is a half inch further that way. So we gotta go a quarter inch more this way, but um, the other swing arm's a little bit wider, isn't it? Well, because we don't have the, uh, the stuff in the way. I feel like we should grab that swing arm. Maybe we should. Yeah, Let's okay. Go get it. So prototype three has been literally in our garage in pieces. Oh, that's really bright. It's literally just been here doing nothing, which is... Collecting lots of dust. Collecting lots of dust. So we're gonna go ahead and just grab the swing arm because we need it. We just wanna make sure it's actually accurate. So here we go. My dad loves these choppers, so he usually buys them, fixes them, and flips them. It's pretty cool. I like how they're exhaust. It's like, it goes up like this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We got the new swing arm in there now, and unfortunately we didn't realize, but there are a couple bolts here that are a little bit too long. And so we need to swap these out, but we don't have the right hardware, but we will replace those when we actually build the final one ready to ride. So let's go ahead and put the shock in and then let's uh, get the engine back in there. Okay. I'm having PTSD, trying to build this three times in the heat in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> but I had to do it on the floor. Oh my God. I don't God. know how you did it, man. Because it had to get done. We got our triple clamps. So these are the production ones. We just got them from Tom basically this past week. Dad, you want to show them how to kind of assemble this? Because you want to build the front end and then put it on the bike. Yeah. We call these our handlebar sleeves, but this is what basically connects the upper and the lower triple clamps together so that they basically act as one. And what's really cool is we've added in, this was Tom's idea, some slots like this and so that allows us to actually clamp onto the handlebars themselves. But we realize that we want to have some redundancy to prevent any potential of the handlebars rotating. And so we've actually threaded and tapped right here a little hole that will fit a set screw. And that goes directly into the handlebars so they will not rotate at all. Okay. So is the bottom. Allen key. Are they at? Okay. Okay, so the one thing about chroming the sleeves is that it obviously adds a little bit of material. So we've machined these to fit around the sleeves perfectly, but because we chromed them, um, we probably shouldn't have chromed the section that goes into the triple clamp. So is it good? Yeah, they look... Look even? Yeah, and if you have a little grease, it will help hold it in place. Yeah, obviously, the, this isn't the bike we're going to be riding. Oh, yeah, look at that. Fits okay. perfectly. Yeah, put the nut through it. The bolt. The bolt. Oh, wait, we need washers. So if you haven't seen, we 3D printed these boxes here that have like all the stuff that we need for basically building these bikes. Um, however, oh, here they go. So these are the neck washers. Look at that, nice and free and beautiful. Buttery. Yeah. So I don't remember why, but for some reason, we cut off the stopper at the bottom of this neck. Do you know why? Oh, it was preventing us from being able to mount it. Yeah. So when we first made this, this again was prototype two, the stopper literally stopped us from being able to clamp the front end. So we had to cut it off. So right now there is no stopper, but again, we are gonna be building this out of a production bike, which will have the, st the stopper built in. So. But who needs a stopper? It doesn't have to be super tight. Let's see, does it move nice and free? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Now we gotta put on the front forks. Should slip right in. Yeah, see? Yep. Okay. Hey, this is the one the wrong way. <laughs> oh, it is the wrong way. <laughs> oh, man. Do we know what we're doing yet? No. We're learning all over again. I don't know why. 
been so long. What's wrong with us? Mm. It might not work with two washers. Nothing like a smell of fresh new tires. We got pretty much it in almost a full roller, but we are missing the handlebars. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in right now because we definitely need them in order to really see the whole thing. We even have a seat. We won't put the seat on just yet, but I think it's looking pretty good. It's nice to finally see the 670 in there with the wheels. Last time it was just the frame, but now it's starting to feel like an actual mini bike. So again, as you can see, in order to prevent the handlebars from rotating at all, yes, they're gonna be clamped here, and we are waiting on this hardware to arrive. I accidentally bought the bolts that were just slightly too long, and so we're waiting on those, but these set screws by themselves should be strong enough for us to be able to just lock that handlebar in place so it won't rotate. So this is gonna be pretty much like what it is on the jack shaft. So as you can see, like this is the one fear that we have is you're riding and then all of a sudden, if this bolt some reason comes loose, then your handlebar is gonna rotate and you don't want that. So these set screws that are in here, they're gonna actually dig right into the handlebar. And so I'm gonna just show you, I'm only going to do the set screw. As you know, there's no bolt there. And we're gonna see just how much of a difference that actually makes. So let's get the Allen key in there. Let's just give it rotation. Okay. So like, that's a pretty solid, like there. And let's see, oh my gosh. No, like I can't, I obviously once you're down, you'll have a little bit more leverage, but that already, and I bet I can go a little bit tighter on this, that plus this whole mechanism should lock these handlebars with 100% certainty and you shouldn't have to worry. So we wanted to make sure to include this redundancy because we realized in the production process that we wanna make sure there's no reason that these handlebars will rotate because that's obviously a concern when you're riding. So <laughs> look how cool this is. I like it. <laughs> yeah, like it makes it feel like we're almost ready to ride it. Oh yeah. Even though there's so much left to do. Oh, I can't wait to start the exhaust. But um, okay, now that that's all on there, should we? Let's, let's do the jack shaft thing now. Jack shaft and torque converter. Yeah. Okay. These are our bearing houses. My dad went ahead. So this was actually um, more closer to like this. It might be hard to tell the difference. My dad wanted to see what it would look like polished. This almost looks like chrome, which will look great. Yeah. And then these being, these sit right there just like that. Yeah. And then the shaft goes through it. So yeah, let's let's put these on. Okay. Again, we won't have to put them tight because we'll still need to adjust it once we get that torque converter. Yeah, we'll on do there. all the tightening at the end. Okay. So one of the issues that you might run into when running a setup like this, where you have a massive engine, but pretty much any engine with a torque converter, when you get the torque converter, it comes with like a plate like this. And the plate is what holds everything together. And then it has a very small jack shaft where it has a sprocket on the end of it. And this is the sprocket right here, or sorry, this, no, is, this the is the shaft. shaft. Yeah. And as you can see, yes, it technically would work, right? If it was here, but the issue with it is that we needed it to go all the way to the other side because the sprocket sits right here. And so a couple weeks ago, we realized that and we got ourselves a new jack shaft and we brought it to a machine shop just to go ahead and basically add the thread on both ends. And now this one here is I think 18 inches and this was 12. And so as you can see, it's a pretty big difference, but this is what will allow us to actually use the torque converter with the 670 and it will allow us to use the bearing houses that we've made so it will run all the way through to the other side and everything should be perfect. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. On this this is literally the moment we've been waiting for <laughs> for weeks now. Well, that's a good sign. There we go. Okay, you get the socket. We got the jack shaft mounted. We have collars on both sides where the bearings are. Now the bearings will be, they will have Loctite so that they won't fun, like fall out, but the collars are just for that extra security. And then this, we still got to figure out where we need to put it. But now we got to put on this. Big this is where the belt goes. Big bad clutch. You got the Allen key for this guy? Yeah. We could definitely back this off of it. There's quite a few there. I want to see something. Okay, so this has to sit there like that. Yeah, so that we need those spacers there. For so the, these spacers need yeah. to be there. Okay, so we, we just need more on the longer one. Okay, so one. let's put this guy in. What are you doing? 
Okay. Oh, we put this on the wrong way. What do you mean? It's got to be turned around. Wait a second. No, no. It's the right way. <laughs> it goes this way. That's as far over as it can go to the right, though. So that's uh, Is that where it needs right to be? Right where it has to be, then. Okay. Forgot the Loctite. It's not going. This is just mock up. Keep in mind, like, see, this frame doesn't need. We didn't even have a chain tensioner at this point. So the chain tensioner will go here and basically push up on this chain like that. Yeah. So it'll be nice and tight because, I mean, the wheel's not even. Like, we don't even have our chain adjusters back here, the axle blocks, to be able to lock the wheel where it needs to be. But again, we just want to make sure that this will all work and anything else we need to figure out, like the exhaust, all that stuff, we're going to do down here. And then once we know it's ready to go, we're going to take all of it off, bring it upstairs, and we're going to finish it in the garage. So what else do we really need to do? I mean, we could start discussing ways to do the exhaust. Yeah, well, I'm, just, I'm going to take a look at that now when I'm I here. guess we need to put the belt on because this belt, yeah. we need to get the engine all lined up. It might seem redundant to like build it on this frame, take everything off and then put it on another frame. But we just want to make sure we have everything we need. And ultimately, if we're missing something, we can order it or have it made. But this will give us a good idea of exactly how everything will work so that when we put it on the production frame, it'll just go really, really smooth. So let's put this belt on. Oh, okay. So for the exhaust, we ordered some uh, from Amazon, some 90 degree stainless steel and then some straight pipe. You got some straight, some bends. Yeah, some, yeah. Okay. To, so to figure out how we're going to do this exhaust. The nice thing about this is we can obviously weld it. So we can literally just put it in there and see what it would look like, how it would work, what angle we want to go at, um, you know, and whether or not is it long enough, do we need straight pieces? Because that right there is going to touch this. Yeah. It's crying. We need it. It's crying, Sam. Tears of joy. It's getting used. No. Yeah, I think we, we need this part here, the straight yeah, part. Yeah, we'll, we'll use the straight part, but I'm just saying the nice thing is we can control it and then it can come out and then I think it... One of them needs to go up though and then like... I just wish that these weren't as long. It turns out we need a few more elbows in order to really build out the exhaust. So we're going to have to order those from Amazon. Might take a few days to get here, but we're still going to make headway. However, we think that this is a great place to stop. And we'll pick up in part two where we're going to take this all upstairs. We'll have our new frame and we'll actually put this into a full rolling chassis where we could take it for its first test ride. And then once we've done that, we can strip it all down, get it painted and then put it together for its final time and that will be it. We'll finally officially have the 670 MBK1 100% done. What are your thoughts? Yeah. It's been a long time oh, in the coming. Yeah. Almost a year in the making, but realistically, we bought the engine about a year ago and there's just been so many things in between. So we appreciate your patience. Hopefully you guys like where we're headed, but if you have any ideas for the exhaust, drop it in the comments. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out when we upload next. All right, we'll see you in that next video when we do. Bye. <laughs>